Welcome to the Art of Listening to Your Body podcast. My name is Jin Ong and I'm your host. I love talking about the mind-body connection and how your physical body manifests your emotional state and how this leads to living a life grounded in values and driven by purpose. Hi, my name is Jin Ong. I'm a qualified osteopath, herbalist and psychosomatic therapist clinic owner and mum to one. And this is my first podcast on the art of listening to your body. Thanks so much for joining me and I'm really excited to share more information with you. Let me start by telling you a little bit more about myself and how what I'm doing has come about. I've been practicing as an osteopath for 13 years now and I've dabbled in a number of other areas in health and wellness. Before all of this, I dreamt about working in the beauty industry I trained at 14 to become a nail technician of all things and worked in a nail bar inhaling toxic chemicals, putting acrylic nails on people and airbrushing pretty pictures onto them. I then worked in a pharmacy for seven years during my school and university years. I trained as a dispensary technician and dreamt about becoming a drug rep. I loved the routine and repetition and engaging with customers and the free stuff was pretty cool too. I always knew that I wanted to work in the health industry, but I just sort of fell into osteopathy. For those of you who don't know what an osteo is, we primarily treat the musculoskeletal system, but actually a whole heap more as well. It really depends on where your interests lie, and I believe a lot of this comes down to your own personal experience. Through my own skin issues, like acne and rashes, I discovered naturopathy and did some solid work on diet and herbs to get my gut health right. I was inspired and went on to train as a Western herbalist. I also used acupuncture needles pretty much from when I started practicing and I loved the emotional response that I could trigger out of someone. I call this emotional needling. I also then went on to train in Western medical acupuncture to further my knowledge. My parents are Malaysian Chinese and I was born in Melbourne, Australia and I was eating goji berries long before they were a cool superfood. My journey in the health and wellness industry has been interesting, one that I almost bailed out of early on in practice, because life in practice is just so different to what you learn at university or any of the institutions that I studied with. I was taught that osteo was a holistic therapy, and it is on the physical level where you not only look at the symptoms, but the whole body and how it all relates. Then you maybe consider lifestyle and environmental factors. I learned exercises and techniques and things to make people better. So there's this pressure to make people feel better and that you should be able to do this with the skills that you learn. And most of the time this works. But when it wasn't working for me and I wasn't making a difference in a handful of people, I wanted to fill the gap. I started to search for courses to upskill me as a therapist. These were great, but they didn't really hit the mark. None of them really considered how much the mind could influence how the body feels. It wasn't until I did training in mind-body work that I felt like I could truly call myself a holistic therapist. This was psychosomatic therapy training. There's a lot of therapists out there who burn out, not necessarily from seeing too many patients, but rather not being satisfied with the results or the lack of results that they achieve with their patients. Or they have difficulty with the heavy emotional baggage that their patients bring with them and they don't really know what to do with it all. I feel this goes for all industries. If we're not satisfied, we can burn out easier. And this is why I believe it's important that we find something that we connect with, something that is in line with our passion and purpose so that we can overcome the inevitable challenges. I was only four years into practice when I was soon getting pretty sick of treating chronic patients or even the acute ones that came in with their interesting personalities. For the chronic patients who had experienced many months or years of being in discomfort, and had seen lots of people, I was their last resort. Because people still wonder what an osteopath is, and they come to us as a last resort, I've heard it so many times, they say, I'm going to give up after this. Unfortunately, with the chronicity of their discomfort, some lacked the motivation to make changes, or maybe it was that they weren't given enough guidance early on in their journey. They weren't interested in taking responsibility for their health, and they were making excuses for why they couldn't do something or blaming others for the way they felt. It was almost like they wanted to stay in pain. 
I couldn't work out a way to be tactful, to say that they were causing their own misery, especially because some had become so unaware, unaware that their thoughts, their beliefs, perceptions, and therefore their actions and behavior were just so negative and impacting how they felt and others around them. I think most therapists who have been in practice for a while see this all the time and just want to pull people out of it, but it's not that simple. I became fascinated with the mind-body connection and there's so much information and research out there, but how do you put it all together and then facilitate teaching someone that their mind is influencing how their body feels? What do you do when you know someone's emotional and mental state are playing a bigger part in their symptoms than they are letting on? Firstly, how do you approach this? What do you say? Secondly, if you dig deeper and trigger someone, what do you do with these emotions? The crying, the anger, the verbal diarrhea that comes out telling you all the things that are wrong in their life and who's to blame. These couple of questions are something I get asked a lot by people who work in the health and wellness industry, both conventional and alternative. They say they don't feel comfortable or confident dealing with the deeper issues, they don't have time or they don't want to cause more stress. You don't want to be the one that opens up the can of worms because then you feel like it's your responsibility to fix it. Adding to this challenge, patients often don't volunteer information around the deeper issues so easily. They may be too embarrassed to admit that things aren't okay in life, or they don't want to be perceived as weak or different. So let's put ourselves in the shoes of our patients or clients who are seeking help from a therapist. These sort of emotions are difficult to deal with, and they're easy to push aside especially in this world of convenience where everything's on demand, quick fixes, pills, medications, diets, treatment, they're so much easier to reach for instead of going deeper and dealing with the real issues. So I was a therapist that didn't know how or what to do with all of this information and I'm still learning. I became the patient. I love pain stories. I like to hear how people came to accept and adapt around their pain and what lessons they gained from them, where they've been, and where they are now. So I'll share mine with you. In 2012, I moved to Brisbane to work, and this is when I experienced the worst health in my life. I had terrible acne, rashes all over my body, joint stiffness, eye ulcers, random fevers that I couldn't explain. At the same time, I experienced the biggest transformations in my personal and professional life. Although it could have been worse, this was the crisis that triggered me to change. Now, I don't usually get muscle or joint discomfort, but at this time, I had this niggly shoulder injury from climbing. Like most people, I hoped it would get better, but it kept getting worse, and then it started to interfere with my work. So I started to take painkillers because it was much easier. I remember at the time, with everything else going on with my health, that I was on my way to triggering some sort of autoimmune condition. But I knew deep down that my emotions were at play. Professionally, I wasn't fulfilled because I wasn't making a difference in people's lives like I thought I could. This was the main issue, and environment was another big contributing factor with all that heat and humidity in Brisbane. I started searching for treatment. I saw the practitioners at work, and they did what I told them because they thought I knew what was going on. I had my neck cracked and was given loads of exercises, but it didn't work. In my mind, I was set on someone doing something that would fix my pain. So when osteo didn't work, I moved on to find the next person who would treat me. I'll go into more specifics about this story in another episode. But this podcast has come about because I could talk about mind-body work and how emotions manifest physically all the time. I get questions about this pretty often. And I feel that if we can all start the journey of learning more about ourselves, listening to our body and how it speaks to us, we can start making positive changes in our life before we need to reach a crisis point. This information is for practitioners, as well as those of you who may experience discomfort, pain, injury or illness that you know has a deeper emotional connection. I hope that this podcast can provide you with insights and practical information on increasing your emotional awareness, as well as setting you back on track to living the life that you want. I'll bring on people with some pretty interesting pain stories, practitioners who are experts in the field, and share my own insights. 
One thing I love about this work is that when you start to clear away the mess, you start to get clarity about the path ahead. This is also where I love to help people with some basic foundational exercises to ensure that they stay true to their vision and stay grounded in values and driven by purpose. Remember, information in this podcast does not replace professional advice as we are all individuals. Thanks for listening and I look forward to sharing with you more in future episodes. Thank you for listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed it and want to hear more, please subscribe and share with your friends. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram. My handle is The Art of Listening to Your Body. If you're interested in getting started with a foundational exercise, head to my website, planningpowerhouse.com, and grab your free Core Values worksheet.